Major League Baseball in the 1990s and early 2000s was dominated by hitters. Oversized sluggers like Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, and Sammy Sosa shattered home run records seemingly every year during the period that is now known as the steroid era. It was a brutal time to be a pitcher, unless of course you were juiced yourself like Roger Clemens, or a freak of nature like Randy Johnson, or a pitching mastermind like Greg Maddox, or unless you were Pedro Martinez. Though small in stature at just 5 foot 11 and 170 pounds, Pedro today easily ranks as one of the most imposing power pitchers in the history of the game, as well as quite simply one of the best. With a repertoire that included mind-boggling stuff as well as cutthroat intimidation tactics, Martinez etched his name into baseball history in a manner that will never be forgotten, and perhaps never again rivaled. In fact, the absolute peak of his career from 1997 through 2003 might just be the most dominant run of starting pitching the game has ever seen, period. But how exactly did this undersized titan get there, and how would he follow it up? Come along with us today as we explore the career of Pedro, and why we believe there will never be another pitcher quite like him. Pedro Martinez was born into abject poverty in the Dominican Republic. He was one of five children to a father who was a janitor and a mom who washed clothes. The family lived in a small tin roof shack with dirt floors. As a child, Pedro worshipped his older brother Ramon, himself a formidable prospect. And when he ended up signing with the Dodgers and going to their local baseball academy, 13-year-old Pedro came along. When an LA scout noticed the skinny teenager clocking around 80 on the radar gun, they signed him as well. And at age 16, he began his road to the big leagues, following in his big brother's footsteps. In 1991, the 19-year-old rose rapidly through all three levels of the Dodgers minor league system, posting an impressive record of 18-8 with a 2.28 ERA and 192 strikeouts in his first professional season. The Sporting News named him its minor league player of the year. Young Pedro was just 5'9 and 160 pounds at the time, but armed with a low 90s fastball and a nasty changeup like Ramon, the big league team took notice. During spring training in 1992, the team's executive vice president, Fred Clare, famously declared, I won't trade Pedro Martinez. I don't care who they offer. Those were words that would go on to haunt him and the Dodgers for years to come. The 20-year-old Pedro struggled a little bit in AAA. I would not go on to make the major leagues until September, where he pitched a complete game but lost his first major league start 3-1 in Cincinnati. He joined his brother Ramon full-time in the big leagues in 1993, where he appeared in 65 games, almost entirely in relief. He finished with a 10 5 record and 2.61 ERA, while managing to strike out 119 batters in just 107 innings pitched. An impressive rookie season. However, things were not all good in Hollywood. The Dodgers manager at the time, Tommy Lasorda, didn't believe Pedro had the endurance to be a major league starter, hence his appearances out of the pen. As such, he advised the front office to make the young hurler available for trade, as elite relievers weren't exactly a hot commodity in the early 90s. So, under this frame of thinking, Fred Clare traded Pedro for promising second base prospect Delano De Shields from the Expos. This would almost immediately backfire. Montreal plugged Martinez into their starting rotation in 1994, alongside the likes of Ken Hill and Jeff Facero, and the team proceeded to immediately enjoy their best season in franchise history, posting the best record in baseball until the player strike derailed their chances at a World Series title. Martinez announced his presence with authority in Canada, going 11 and 5 at the 1.24 ERA+, striking out a batter an inning, and garnering the nickname Senior Plunk because of his tendency to throw inside. Over and over and over again. That year, Pedro led the league with 11 hit batsmen, got thrown out of a dozen games, most of which he wasn't pitching in, and got into three separate fights. In April, Pedro took a perfect game into the eighth inning when he hit the Reds' Reggie Sanders on the elbow, sparking a bench-clearing brawl. The 22-year-old Martinez had earned the reputation as a fiery headhunter, but he was about to become known as something more, one of the best pitchers in the history of the game. In 1995, Martinez won 14 games and struck out 174 batters, while hitting 11 of them yet again. It wasn't a world-shattering campaign, but he did accomplish something that set the baseball world on watch nonetheless. In June, Martinez became the first player since Harvey Haddix to take a perfect game into extra innings. Martinez would go on to give up a double to Bip Roberts in the 10th inning to lose his bid at history, but regardless, this helped show off just a fraction of the dominance that was to come. The following season, in 1996, Pedro went 13-10, getting very little in run support from the Expos, who scored just 22 total runs in those losses. But Martinez, now 24, was still getting better and better, including earning his first All-Star selection. This was also the year he broke 200 innings and Ks for the first time. And then, in 1997, his final season in Montreal, he took things to a whole other level, one few pitchers have ever reached. He went 17-8 with a jaw-dropping, league-leading B-War of 9.0. He led the National League in ERA at 190, Ks at 305, complete games with 13, and ERA Plus with a mind-numbing 219 mark, making him over doubly as good as an average pitcher. 
In the process, he became the first Expos player to win the Cy Young, and also the first Dominican pitcher to do so. The 25-year-old All-Star had developed a daunting arsenal, which included three world-class pitches, a tailing high 90s fastball, a wicked curve, and a nasty all-time great circle change. Pedro could practically toy with hitters with this stuff, especially due to the fact he could command it so well. Plus, his willingness to come inside could leave batters tasting dirt just as easily as flailing at yet another nasty offering. I'm not afraid of hitting anyone, he once said, because I can put the ball exactly where I want to. But sadly for Montreal, this is where his run of dominance would come to an end north of the border. Fearing he would incur a massive pay raise following his dominant season, they decided to trade their Cy Young winner to Boston for Carl Provano and Tony Armas. This would, as it had for the Dodgers, end up aging like old cereal milk. In his first season in a Red Sox uniform, Martinez went 19-7 with a 2.89 ERA and 251 strikeouts, earning a third straight All-Star nod while just losing out on another Cy Young award to a chemically enhanced Roger Clemens. Pedro finally got a taste of the postseason too, winning his only start against the Indians in the ALDS before Boston eventually bowed out. If 1998 was dominant, Pedro's 1999 season was just plain historic going 23-4 with a 2.07 ERA and 313 strikeouts were enough to win him the Triple Crown and his second Cy Young Award. He also reset his personal highs with an ERA Plus of 243 and a B-War of 9.8, with both totals also pacing the majors, obviously. What's more, he also had one of the most iconic moments of his career that season as well, showing out on a national stage in the All-Star Game versus a slew of roid heads. In front of the hometown faithful at Fenway, Pedro struck out five of the six batters he faced, en route to winning the MVP of the contest. His competition in that game included no less than Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, Larry Walker, Barry Larkin, and Jeff Bagwell, all players who, under normal circumstances, would have been no doubt Hall of Famers. He also started to make a name for himself in the postseason. In the deciding Game 5 of the ALDS against Cleveland, Pedro entered a tie game in relief in the fourth inning, before pitching five scoreless no-hit innings to shut down the Indians and launch his team into the next round. Martinez won his showdown against the Yankees' Roger Clemens in the ALCS, but the Red Sox lost that series in five games. It seemed impossible that Martinez could ever have another season like 1999, but he came out in 2000 and somehow pitched even better and what was the height of the steroid era. When other major league pitchers were getting tape measure moonshots hit off them left and right, Pedro just flat out annihilated opposing batters, winning his second consecutive Cy Young Award, going 18-6 with 284 strikeouts and a microscopic 1.74 ERA. He held opponents to a 213 OBP, the lowest recorded in 100 years. His ERA Plus was an absurd 291, the best in modern baseball history. His 11.7 B-War was also the fifth highest recorded in the live ball era. It's hard to even describe succinctly how good Pedro was in 2000, so we want to advise you to watch Foolish Baseball's video that covers in depth both this year and his other insane prime seasons as well. Martinez and the record books were sidelined a little in the following season, 2001, because of a rotator cuff injury that knocked him out for two months. He still went 7-3 with a 2.69 ERA, but he wound up only throwing 116 innings, while posting his first sub-200 ERA plus season in three years at 188. But he rebounded in 2002, winning 20 games while striking out 239 hitters with a 2.26 ERA and 202 ERA plus. This again led the league, but alas, due to an abundance of old-time thinking concerning the importance of wins, he finished second in the Cy Young voting to Oakland's 23-game winner Barry Zito, a pitcher who had an ERA half a run higher than him and an ERA plus almost 50 points worse. Martinez had risen to be one of the best pitchers in the game, but he also retained the intimidation factor that he'd become known for as a young hurler. Armed with his now more so low 90s heater, he still was willing to challenge anyone and try to scare them while doing it too. When I hit a batter, Martinez later wrote in his book, it was 90% intentional. For example, after Roger Clemens once drilled his Red Sox teammate Kevin Millar, Martinez, watching from the dugout, said that he, quote, filed that at the top of his to-do list. What exactly did that mean? Well, plunking both Derek Jeter and Alfonso Soriano the next time he faced them. Both players had to leave early to have x-rays taken. Martinez joked to teammates, at least they gave them a discount in an ambulance. They both got to go in the same one. Sometimes, Senior Plung's competitive fire got the best of him, like in the 2003 ALCS. That year, Martinez had another outstanding, all-time great campaign, with a 14-4 record and league-leading 2.22 ERA and 2.11 ERA+. But, during his first start in Game 3 of that series, against old nemesis Clemens and the Yankees, Martinez threw a pitch behind Yankees outfielder Kareem Garcia in the fourth inning. But, after Clemens threw a pitch high inside to Red Sox slugger Manny Ramirez the following inning, the bench is cleared. The Yankees' 72-year-old bench coach Don Zimmer charged the 32-year-old Martinez, who threw him to the ground. No one was injured, but it was ugly. Martinez later called it the only thing he would like to erase from his career. 
Of course, the 2003 ALCS would only get worse for Martinez in Boston. In the deciding Game 7, Pedro and the Red Sox took a 5-2 lead into the 8th, coming just 6 outs away from the World Series. After Pedro gave up hits to Derek Jeter and Bernie Williams, the Red Sox were up by just 2 with 1 out, a runner on, and Hideki Matsui coming up. Pedro had thrown 115 pitches, and to many, he looked gassed. Red Sox manager Grady Little came to the mound and asked if his ace had anything left. Pedro said he did, and Little left him in. Matsui followed with a ground rule double, then Jorge Posada came through with a 2 RBI single, and suddenly, the game was tied. Aaron Boone would go on to hit the series winning homer off of reliever Tim Wakefield in the 11th. The Red Sox, still at the time riding a drought over 80 years old, were bounced from the playoffs. Grady Little was promptly fired. Pedro finally fell down to earth in 2004, going 16-9 with a 3.90 ERA, the highest of his career to date, along with the 124 ERA+, plus, his worst mark since 1995. But this wouldn't deter the Red Sox, who followed up that heartbreaking loss from the previous year with the historic, curse-breaking World Series Championship, coming back from a 3 games to 0 deficit in their ALCS rematch with the Yankees before sweeping the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. Pedro pitched 7 shutout innings for the win in Game 3 of that WS. It would be Pedro's first and only World Series title. After some apparently tenuous contract negotiations with the Sox, during which Pedro later described their offers as disrespectful, Martinez took his talents to the Big Apple in 2005, signing with the New York Mets as a free agent for 4 years and $53 million. He was now 33 years old, but quickly proved he still had some gas left in the tank. In his first season with the Mets, he made the National League All-Star team, going 15-8 with a 2.82 ERA, as well as leading the majors with a 0.95 whip, one of the best marks of his career overall. Things started to come apart a bit in 2006, including the breakdown of Pedro's body at large. Injuries to his toe, calf, and hip limited him to just 23 starts, and his ERA ballooned to a new career high of 4.48. It was the first season in his career he registered as a below average pitcher by ERA plus as well, at a total of just 98. A torn rotator cuff finished off his season and required surgery. As a result, Martinez missed most of 2007, but he did manage to return for 5 starts, during which he crossed a major milestone, striking out his 3,000th career batter in Cincinnati that September. Pedro battled injuries again in 2008, his final season in NY and the 36-year-old had the worst year of his career bar none, including new career worst totals of a 5.61 ERA, 75 ERA+, plus, and just 7.2 Ks per 9. It looked like the end for one of baseball's best ever, but Martinez wasn't quite done, signing a one-year deal in mid-season the following year with the defending champion Philadelphia Phillies. He would go on to perform decently for them, posting a 3.63 ERA and 117 ERA+, plus in 9 starts. Philly would end up battling Pedro's old nemesis, the Yankees, in the 2009 World Series, with Martinez losing Game 2 to New York's A.J. Burnett before returning in Game 6 to surrender 4 runs in 4 innings, as the Yankees won the game and the series. It was a somewhat melancholy end to a legendary career, but given what he had endured the previous half decade in relation to injuries, it was still impressive nonetheless. Since retiring, Martinez has been busy with everything from charitable projects in the Dominican Republic, to penning his autobiography, to making fairly regular analyst appearances on TV. He even worked as a special assistant to the general manager of the Red Sox, helping them win another World Series title in 2013. Senior Plunk was elected to the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility in 2015, with the Red Sox retiring his number 45 that same year. In the end, Pedro Martinez racked up 219 wins, 3,154 strikeouts, the most ever by a pitcher under 6 feet, and a 2.93 ERA. His 154 ERA plus is the second highest all time among pitchers with at least 2,500 innings pitched, behind just Clayton Kershaw at 157. He also won 3 Cy Young awards, including one in each league, and made 8 all-star teams. In an era dominated by performance enhancing drugs, home run records, and oversized sluggers, it was a 5'11", 170 pound wiry Dominican hurler who dazzled, intimidated, and blew through opposing lineups with an ease that may never again be rivaled, as his performance in back to back seasons in 1999 and 2000 may well stand as the greatest seasons ever recorded by a pitcher. All of this, and so much more than we could ever fit into one video, is why we here at MTC believe we can confidently say there will never be another Pedro Martinez. Now, thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and click this playlist for other essay content just like this. Have a great rest of your day.